Hi, what's up MMA fans, it's MMA Headspace here. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's background and history in mixed martial arts, his upcoming fight with Anthony Pettis, and the future of karate in the UFC. But before I get into all of this, let me show you a quick edit of some of Wonderboy's highlight clips in the UFC. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Welcome back guys. Firstly, let's talk about Wonderboy's background, his upbringing, and what led him to UFC and where he stands now. Wonderboy is a true mixed martial artist who has been practicing martial arts since the age of three years old. He was born into a family of martial artists that went to school teaching karate in Simpsonville, South Carolina for over 33 years. He has two brothers and two sisters who also started learning karate at the age of three. One of those sisters actually went on to fight before he did, and his father, his role model, his coach, used to compete in high-level karate bouts in the 70s and 80s. All of these things combined led Wonderboy to become inspired. You could say that karate runs through this man's veins, it's in his genetics, which led him to want to compete himself in what seemed like the right sport for him at the time, kickboxing. Wonderboy started his full contact training at the age of 12, and had his first full contact kickboxing fight at the mere age of 15. Inspired by his father and sister, Thompson allowed his father to sit in his corner and coach him, and contrary to most father-son duos in combat sports, the two still remain together today in the UFC as father-son, fighter and coach. From that first fight at 15, or maybe even before, Wonderboy knew that he wanted to be the best martial artist on the planet. He wanted to be the greatest striker in the world. He never felt pressure from his father to compete, or to remain undefeated, he just took every fight as it came, and the motivation came from working his opponents out, game planning, and letting his striking do the talking in the ring. Wonderboy first discovered UFC at UFC 3, where he attended the live event at Charlotte, North Carolina, and after accumulating 57 wins to no losses in kickboxing, Thompson became a sparring partner of former welterweight champion, and arguably greatest of all time, George St. Pierre. Wonderboy, after having a long layoff due to a knee injury, was inspired by George and found himself learning wrestling, jiu-jitsu and judo in order to become a more effective sparring partner for George and other MMA fighters such as his brother-in-law, Chris Weidman. Wonderboy would be brought in to closely replicate the styles of striking of Anderson Silva in training, and as Thompson was picking up new skills and adapting his pristine karate skills to a fighting style where grappling was involved, this gave him the perfect springboard into a mixed martial arts career. Wonderboy started off by having a few bouts with minor organisations, earning himself a professional record of 5-0, even winning one of those fights by a rear naked choke. He then got a call from UFC offering him a fight, but he didn't feel ready at all. Where he felt like his striking exceeded most UFC fighters, he also knew his wrestling and jiu-jitsu were lacking when compared to the high calibre opponents that he would face in the UFC. However, after his father encouraged him to take the fight, as it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, 
Thompson decided to just go for it. His first opponent was Dan Stigian at UFC 143. He walked through the crowds of thousands cheering him on to win or to lose and made his first step into the octagon. He took a nervous bow and the fight was underway. Before he knew it, he landed a giant head kick on Stigian that put him to sleep and the crowd fell silent. Certainly an eyebrow raising entrance to the UFC. Just two days after that fight, the UFC called him up. Be ready in April. You're fighting Matt Brown, a dangerous opponent. Fierce wrestling, great jiu-jitsu, ferocious striking, and most importantly, experience which Thompson just didn't have at that time in mixed martial arts. It amounted to too much, and Thompson not only experienced his first loss in MMA, but his first loss in his fighting career. This was a time for reflection, to go back to the drawing board and to make improvements to his game. Thompson came back and ran through the welterweight division with big wins over the likes of Robert Whittaker, Jake Ellenberger, Johnny Hendricks and Rory McDonald. He looked flawless. The spirit of karate flowing through his clinical striking ability. Wonderboy, fight by fight, won over the crowds of the MMA fans with spectacular highlight reel head kicks and punching combinations, demonstrating the effectiveness of high-level karate in the UFC. The embodiment of discipline in martial arts, calculating calmly the distance, when to throw the strikes, capturing those opportunities that only happen for a split second to knock the equilibrium of his opponents off balance. After working his way up the welterweight rankings, he was ready. The title shot was booked in. He would be competing against the then kingpin of the welterweight division, Tyron Woodley. It was on. The fight was booked and it was underway, and in the first round it looked like Thompson had the edge, hitting Tyron clean with beautiful one-twos and maintaining his distance well. A few rounds passed, and in the fourth, Thompson ate a big right hand from Woodley. He popped back up to his feet and ate another right hand on the chin, which sent him to the ground. Next thing he knew, he was in a deep guillotine choke, and he was not going to tap. He was not going to give up. A brilliant display of resilience and heart, Years of training, the fans, coaching at the karate school, all flashed through his mind in those moments that felt like an eternity. And his head was free. The round ends with Thompson raining down shots on Woodley. Before you know it, the last round finishes and both fighters wait anxiously to hear the judges' decisions. After a small mistake by Bruce Buffer announcing that the fight was initially a win for Tyron Woodley, the fight was ruled a majority draw. It was a nail-biter. Woodley had the bigger moments in the fight and nearly finished Wonderboy twice, but Thompson was a more consistent performer and displayed his heart and once again how effective karate can be in the UFC against a true champion in Woodley. The fight was over, rebooked and resulted in a controversial win for Tyron Woodley after dragging out a lacklustre decision victory where not much happened over the course of 25 minutes. This put Thompson in a very awkward position as the UFC didn't really want to book the third fight over fears that people wouldn't buy the tickets because of a boring performance in the last bout. The UFC decided to give Wonderboy a fight against Jorge Masvidal, where Wonderboy schooled Masvidal over the course of three rounds, with kicks, maintaining distance and controlling the pace of the fight, and managed to get the decision quite handily. Next, a fight against an up-and-comer with lots of hype and Dana White behind him, Darren Till. A prospect from Liverpool, England, where Darren Till earned a very, very controversial decision over Wonderboy on English soil. Coming off a loss to Darren Till, we flash forward to the present day, and Wonderboy is now looking to make a statement in his next fight against Anthony Pettis. He wants to put on a show for the fans, 
and solidify his position as a top contender in the welterweight division, and potentially make a new run at the title against the current champion, Kamaru Usman. Anthony Smith might seem like an easy opponent for Wonderboy, but don't be fooled. He has a great ground game, crisp boxing, and the ability to knock people out in style. He is no joke, and Wonderboy might have a hard time running through him. If Wonderboy wants to win this fight, he's going to have to slow down the pace of the fight. Use his movement, his kicks, to the legs, the body, the head. Keep Pettis guessing and too timid to rush in out of fear of getting knocked out by the counter punches or getting hurt by the kicks. Thompson will have to earn Anthony's respect with those straight punches that he throws. The one two down the pipe that has hit so many before. He'll have to come in from creative angles during the fight to land strikes that will make Anthony lose his balance and crumble under the intelligent pressure of Wonderboy. Stephen Thompson needs to not only make a statement for himself in this fight, but a statement for the karate discipline. A dying breed, some might say. This leads me into talking about karate as a whole and its place in the UFC in the modern day. From George St. Pierre, Leo to Machida, to the likes of Chuck Liddell and many other older generation fighters. Inspired by the films like Karate Kid, or the culture and history embedded within the martial arts, its core values and disciplines. Many karate practitioners in the UFC have retired or are moving towards the end of their careers. Karate has been adapted to mixed martial arts as an unorthodox skill set that can take opponents by surprise, utilizing the outside space of the octagon, the bouncing stances, and then the blitzes, covering distance very quickly with unorthodox punching and kicking combinations. Despite this, karate has been heavily criticized as a martial art that is not effective in the UFC, when compared to the other complete mixed martial artists, fighters with wrestling and kickboxing, and a jiu-jitsu awareness have proven to have a great amount of success in recent years. This begs the question, is Stephen Thompson one of the last karate remnants that we will see in MMA? Will the next generation of fighters all have this hybrid style skill set because they are taking lessons in MMA gyms rather than specialising in one discipline from a young age? And if that's the case, are we going to start seeing less and less karate schools and more MMA schools? Is it even fair to say that anyone in the UFC is just a karate purist anymore? Or does the nature of this sport mean that one cannot exist only practising one martial art in this discipline? MMA started because we wanted to know which martial arts was most effective in a real fight, and it brought a lot of disciplines together and created exciting matchups. The classic striker versus the jiu jitsu guy, the wrestler versus the boxer. All I want to know of what you guys think of the direction that MMA is heading in. Is it for better or is it for worse? If you've made it this far in the video, then thank you for watching. Until next time, I've been MMA Headspace. You guys have been amazing, and once again, peace out.